All right, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday. The end of the weekend out here is upon us. Work week right around the corner tomorrow, May 12th, 2024. It's about 11.30 a.m. here, California time. And a live stream is up and running. It went down here about an hour or so ago, but got that back up and running as it should be. Uh, earthquake activity. Goodness, we got some movement kicking up here into Southern California uh, with an earthquake coming in of a 5.1 earthquake right now uh, to the area. It looks like it's uh, right on the Southern California region here, just south of the border. Uh, USGS reporting this as a 4.9 earthquake but we've noticed a little increasing movement here in southern california and in general the plate boundary uh, following this morning's 6.0 earthquake 6.4 striking down here uh, very close to the um, area of the middle america trench guatemala border right here with mexico uh, pretty strong earthquake but this area does see quite a bit of earthquake activity on any given occasion uh, in fact, we had one around this area back in uh, January, and as you can see, sixes and even larger earthquakes can take place out there in that region. But it seems as though following, following this earthquake movement this morning, we've seen a shift of migration and pressure up here very close, very close to the San Andreas Fault, the southern branch that sits up here into Southern California. So we've got to watch that. Uh, prior to this five-pointer, or 4.9, take your pick, came in we did see a series of little earthquakes coming in little four shocks now whether this 4.9 is a four shock as well we'll have to watch uh, it is off of the imperial fault here um, which extends obviously into southern california and a little bit further back here it's the plate boundary and um, we'll continue to watch up here around the san andreas fault for some migration either way it's a little close for comfort in terms of uh, earthquake activity so far today. So total tally with this little swarm, uh, about 14 earthquakes coming in here to the area of just south of the border. But still, you know, in an imaginary line here uh, for border between countries, uh, plate tectonics do not care about that. So if we're going to see earthquake activity and migration, it's going to follow that up into the San Andreas Fault, which... Uh, you know, it's obviously primed to produce a big one. In fact, most scientists and geologists uh, believe that an 8.1 earthquake is very likely uh, when this thing does decide to go. Uh, the 8.1 would definitely make life out here in Southern California a little bit on the difficult side uh, for months to come following that large event. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, again, EMSC reporting this as a, uh, looks like they dropped it down to a 5.0. Uh, but USGS consistent with a 4.9 magnitude earthquake. It looks like it has been reviewed. A few folks did report this earthquake here uh, throughout Yuma, Arizona, and maybe even some folks there in, in the uh, San Diego area. So not a not a big earthquake, but it's a sequence of earthquakes that are taking place that we have to watch. All right, uh, what else we got here for larger scale activity overnight? Aside from the six pointer, 6.4 that stirred up this morning. Um, things have been on the, can't really say super active side because, you know, on any given day here, most of this is from yesterday, the Kermadec Trench area. New Zealand did see a small amount of threes kicking up here overnight uh, across the plate boundary. Some older movement here this morning as well and overnight across the Kuroka Machaka. It's going to be a couple fours stirring up out here, but in, you know, realistically speaking, this is on any given day. Uh, with or without space weather activity. Um, and it's interesting, you know, for a six-pointer to come in following uh, this activity. By the way, there's that 4.9 five-pointer showing up on the Southern California seismograph station there. I was looking for that. I had this uh, turned down a little bit, facing too far on the list. Let me get rid of this here real quick. Don't need that many Taiwan stations on here, but I do have the majority of the normal monitoring stations here uh, up once again after the reset of the live stream, 4.9. So uh, aside from that, folks, uh, you know, looking at general earthquake activity out here, got to watch Southern California. You know, you can see how that migration of pressure is kind of moved upwards here following that event and activity earlier this morning. Now, the Middle America Trench, 
a lot takes place here uh, in terms of strain that can happen in the region. The six-pointer came in about 75 kilometers deep into the Middle America Trench, and this zone is very capable of producing larger earthquakes. But it looks as though the general pressure out here against the region is, as a whole, across a good segment of the uh, eastern areas of the Pacific Plate and the adjacent Cocos Plate. That's going to be this little small, very small, light blue colored plate, Cocos Plate right here. Uh, notice the two arrows pointing together indicating a subduction zone, but uh, it doesn't look like it's limited to uh, this area right now as we're seeing that migration work its way up into Southern California as well. So we'll continue to watch that. Definitely has some interesting activity popping off there uh, this morning with a little swarming going on. All right, looking at the rest of the globe here, as you can see, very typical activity. No elevated movement aside from what I just discussed there. Uh, space weather activity, well, let's see what we got. We did see uh, another X flare earlier this morning. A little X one pointer right there, 1.02 it looks like. That is from departing sunspot 3664. This is from last night, the latest uh, magnetogram image. We'll see if it can load. Still having some slow network issues here with, um, with some of these sites. There we go. Let's see if we can get this to key up. It's just the space weather, the space weather events that are stirring this thing up a little bit. There it is out there on the southwestern quadrant of the sun. Still visible and still will be geo-effective in terms of flaring, but uh, any subsequent CME activity that blasts off from here would not be geo-effective. It would be pointed well west of the area of the Earth and uh, not geo-effective. So uh, while we still may see some large flares and still may be dealing with some CME activity that was produced a couple days ago from this event, we'll check that out here in a second, uh, the majority of the threat is going to diminish in terms of large threat, uh, large flaring threat here in the coming days. That's going to be out of sight, out of mind. Uh, a couple different regions here that we're watching. There's a, you know, these are, I believe that's the older sunspot here that's come around for the fourth time. Uh, very disorganized. Doesn't look like a lot of development out here, but I can't remember the name of this one. I think it was 3590. Either way, it's hard to keep track of them as they come back around the bend a couple times. We'll see this one here in a couple weeks, uh, maybe if it holds up and once it comes back around uh, to the Earth-facing side of the sun. But the majority of these sunspots, not super complex. We might have some sea flare threats. I did see some activity stirring up out here last night on the far eastern side of the sun. That looks like um, maybe an active region. I was checking it out in the UV uh, filter here. This is just <laughs> crazy. All right, we'll have to check that out a little bit later, but uh, yeah. So right now, what do we have for threats going on? Are we looking at auroras tonight? Um, let's get into real quick a real cat, real quick summary as to why we didn't see the extensive auroras last night. It did open up a little bit in terms of the BZ component. We allowed it allowed a little bit of southward tilt here just temporarily. Uh, I've seen some roars down into Nebraska. I went outside in my backyard here in Northern California and I could barely see the, the pinkish glow out there on the northern horizon. So that did pop up a little bit. But if you look overnight, the BZ component here, this red line was pretty much above the zero level and you need that below here into this category. Uh, to allow that solar wind stream to flow in here in the North American um, Northern Hemisphere. Still pretty tight in terms of that uh, BZ component. We're hovering right around the zero. We need this to open up more. So even though things are still elevated in terms of temperature, speed from the, from the CME, the solar wind, density has dropped a, a decent amount. But we're still looking at a series of uh, some CMEs coming in, in here through the day and through tonight. Uh, but even though we have these conditions that could spark up some decent auroras, um, the BZ component here is in a uh, not a good position here to allow 
you know, the further amplification of the auroras. So we'll watch that throughout the day. Overall threat um, tonight still shows KP index of around six. Now, the other night when things were really rocking and rolling, it was up there around nine. So things are dropping a little bit. Here's the expected view line a little bit further north. Still got a decent shot here pending things work out right with the BZ component of seeing the auroras up here across the northern states, maybe down into some of the mid latitude areas. Tomorrow night, not so much. Things start really dropping off after tonight. So we're going to have to watch it tonight if things uh, play out. I'll cover that again throughout the day today and keeping an eye on it, uh, seeing if that BZ component doesn't uh, open back up a little bit. Uh, but there's that X flare that was produced this morning. Uh, you know, this sunspot has been quite a dandy of a of a sunspot, and no doubt 3664 will probably go down in the in some of the record books there of uh, you know seeing this historic aurora event here. It was seen, you know, pretty much in every state here in the United States, and um, of course, I heard uh, even down in the Puerto Rico and Hawaii, and I still have to go through all the hundreds of photos. <laughs> that uh, everyone sit in and I'll get it It'll just take me a little while to, to put them all together with the right names and the right locations all right uh, looking at the far side of the Sun we haven't looked at this lately um, the far side of the Sun is going to be this location right here earth facing side here this is going to be the eastern limb western limb over here just the way that the layout is set up here but this is the eastern limb and western limb if it was further would be back over here but this is technically it right here 366 3666 goodness not a good number maybe it is for some i don't know but uh it does look like on the far side of the sun we do have a couple de decent large active regions coming around and this may be the area that i was looking for uh, as far as that explosion some type of event took place last night on the far side let me um, click on the most recent data. Yeah, see, this is a lot closer here on the most recent uh, data, and that's still actually behind a day. UTC time is, um, it might even be behind two days. Well, it's 512, 1800, so about day and a half here old. But either way, this goes to show that there's uh, definitely some huge sunspot here on the far side of the sun, a couple different ones. So we'll watch these, even though we got a little bit of a, a quietness between our our big active region here and you know the next couple days we do have some areas to watch that will be coming around the eastern limb and into view and they look you know can't really tell complexity but it looks fairly large out here all right uh what else do we have out here folks again here's the current aurora forecast uh, the 30 minute forecast as to what to look forward to not a whole lot <clears throat> you know again we got to wait for that BZ component to uh, really drop south and we could see you know a decent uh, solar storm out here once again but uh, things are you know they're staying pretty steady all the flaring activity here over the last couple days Second largest flare this solar cycle, the X 5.8 from 3664. Again, that's the culprit of uh, all the aurora activity here recently. Let me go to the electric power company dashboard. See what? See these guys are up and running right now because the interest in the space weather is, is kind of dropping off a little bit. So it looks like the networks are starting to get back to normal. Uh, but as we put this into motion here, uh, let's see what we got. There's a uh, there's our big CMEs from a couple nights ago and last night. And, you know, there's still going to be some unsettled conditions here tonight and then really drops off tomorrow. Uh, we really don't have a whole lot coming in after what is expected. Some very weak series. See, this is from two nights ago, last night, and today. But after that, you know, things are, I guess, going back to normal. Things have quieted down here on the KP index. Uh, proton event does still look somewhat elevated. Uh, as you can see, it's mostly affecting the upper regions here, polar regions, north, more northward tilt uh, than south. But uh, 
So we'll just we'll, we'll kind of watch it. Uh, if I see things really switch up here a little bit later on, I'll definitely jump in. If I see this thing open up in the southward movement, some of these pinpoints here are starting to drop a little south of that zero line. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of watch it and see what happens. Uh, didn't get a chance to check the Iceland earthquake activity. This is an area of concern because look at this earthquake movement here just around the Grindavik area. Um, I know the eruption has halted here. Let's go to the live from Iceland site. The eruption has halted as of, uh, I think, what, about a, a week now. Things are um, kind of quieted down. I notice they've really spanned out the webcams here because I have a feeling they've, uh, you know, we're going to see some er eruptive event take place out here in the region. And the earthquake activity is key to watching that. They're, they're uh, more inclined in thinking that the eruption is going to take place here in the similar area where our almost two-month-long eruption took place here. Uh, just in between the Hagafell and the Singerfell region here, Storst Hagafell area. Uh, but, you know, I put in that word, there's always a possibility of it opening up further down south here. And that's what I'm watching, this little earthquake activity stir up here into the northern edge of the Grindavik area. Again, this whole area is inflated and it's continuing. Uh, the eight hour run times here in the area of Iceland around Grindavik, like everywhere else out here is, uh, you know, continuing to rise. Let me bring this up here real quick. This is the Grindavik map chart up vertical displacement. Look at that. Still going up here. Even though we had that, you know, two month long eruption, things were still building up underneath this area. So we'll continue to watch that and report back on any major changes. But for now, it's a waiting game uh, to see what happens. But I think we got to watch this here. Look at this. Getting another four pointer coming in just within the last couple minutes here. So that's a pretty decent swarm of earthquakes coming in in this area again just off of the imperial fault now i know quite a few of these fault systems do extend down here south of the border but the usgs does not cover them there's the elsinore fault little segment here that runs through the mountains i can only assume that the san jacinto fault is going to further extend down here as well into the plate boundary which is this area right here in the dark line um so definitely something to watch here because it looks as though things may be building up into a larger quake there's really you know there's too much earthquake activity prior to and after a 4.9 you know one could say right now the 4.9 is the main quake which is just the largest quake but you know we're getting all these uh, other quakes up there in the three and four range as well that makes me think that this area is going to see uh something larger so just a heads up uh for socal area and uh, we'll be back out here throughout the day <clears throat> you know kind of monitoring things and seeing how uh, this space weather activity behaves again seismograph stations showing some of that earth earthquake activity there uh the barrett station is actually in uh right about here if i remember right just outside the pine valley area close to the Elsinore Fault, so it is picking up some of those larger earthquakes there. And they're not really large yet, but it's a, it's the amount of earthquakes that are coming in all at once, and the, uh, you know, that swarm fashion that tells me right there that we are looking at something bigger possibly happening out here uh, with this movement. So stay safe. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on through the day. Um, enjoy what's left of the weekend here. Take care, folks.